I don't care. I love it. Love it. Jack? Jack. Should I change? Why? I'm not changing. Okay. Sometimes, Jack, you just gotta YOLO it. Okay. You guys know that sometimes we film multiple videos on the I same hope, day. I would hope they do. And sometimes, usually we try to change our outfits between every video that we make. Now you're giving away our secrets. These are the behind the scenes secrets that you've been dying to hear about. But sometimes we're just too lazy I'm and we hungry. don't do it. And we're hungry. Well, so I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I didn't eat breakfast. You ate breakfast. I did, but I'm still hungry. I bag was left. I really want a bag. Ooh, a bag will be good. Yeah. There is none. Message your mom and tell her to pick us up something. Do you think she'd do that? Look that, we've been eating all of her food. I've been eating all of her bread. She buy her some bread. We move into our new house in 17 days. Wait, as of this video, let's say Sunday, 17, 17, 15, 15 days. All right, ready? Yep. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games. And board games and exactly, games. we are here today, my friends. What? That was especially like boring games. <laughs> we are here today to do another episode of Board Game Snapshots. Baja! Baja! You do so loud. Baja! Anyways, we are here to do another episode of Board Game Snapshots where we discuss five different board games and we give mini reviews on those board games. Now, we usually put out a list to our Patreon community and we get them to vote on the games they would like to see us discuss the most. So I believe three mm -hmm. of these games were picked by the Patreon community and two are were sent to us for review. So we are going to be discussing those as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah I'm good. We are actually going to start off with one of the games that was sent to us for review because it is a brand new Kickstarter. When's it coming out on Kickstarter? Today. Literally today. What game is it? It is a little game called Mushroom Sorcerer and it's not called Mushroom Kingdom because that's what we were calling it for the longest time. I don't know why either. I don't know why either. So this game is Mushroom Sorcerer, which was sent to us for review from Headblown Studios. This is a demo prototype copy, so keep that in mind for any of the B-roll that you see. It is, it says literally right on the box. That's where it is. Mushroom Sorcerer, as I mentioned, is coming to Kickstarter literally today. You may recognize this game from our most anticipated Kickstarters video that we did a couple of months ago. This game is an adorable game about growing mushrooms, or as they call them in the game, GUs, Mushroom mm -hmm. Towers, and battling to defend your mm -hmm. mushroom tower. It is a bit of an area control battle Definitely, yeah. game. So you are building up, like I said, towers of mushrooms, and each mushroom represents a different kind of element. Mm -hmm. So there's fire, there's water, there's thunder, there's moon, mm -hmm. and there's stone and etc. So you're building up these towers, getting points, gaining elements, and gaining different kind of like abilities as you go through. There's different spells that you're gonna be casting, obviously, because you are a sorcerer. To defend your towers and to defend your honor, you are going to be battling with your opponent by using different little stone guys as shields and little arrow guys as attackers. What Jamie's trying to get to is each of these element types also has a corresponding warrior type. Yeah, that's so what I said. So if you are building up mushrooms of certain types like stone or fire, fire or etc., you're going to get certain meeple types to defend your towers with. Or certain resources. So or thunder resources, gives yeah. you like uh, mana and, and it gives yeah. you different things. So that's basically the game. You are just trying to destroy each other's towers until one person either gets to the 30 point mark or the or you can win by building moon mushroom yeah, there's towers. like a uh, moon blessing yeah there's like an called. alternate victory track and once you commit to that track you are committed to that track mm -hmm. for the rest of the game that's the only way you can win and it's difficult because you have to build a specific type of gu mm -hmm. which is moon and other people are going to come after you immediately once you start doing that. But, exactly. Yeah. It is very cute. Mm -hmm. I would say that it's a really great intro game for area control. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's mm -hmm. fair. Definitely a light to medium weight game. Now, yeah. there are some advanced rules in this game where you can actually turn over your character mat and mm -hmm. they do a lot of different things. We did not play with the advanced mode, mm -hmm. but I would say it's definitely one that you should check out if it sounds like something you're interested in. It does say 14 plus on the box, but I do think that you could get away with some younger kids playing this one as well. I would agree. Yeah, it's super, super cute. 
and that is Mushroom Sorcerer. Yeah, it's fun to build up your little mushroom towers. Yeah, you get to build mushroom towers, and then you get to knock them down. All right, so the next game on our list was voted on by our Patreon community, and I was very happy to see that they voted for this one, and that is Meadow, which is from Rebel Studio. Mm -hmm. The box lid is on upside down, Jeffrey. Now, this is a game... Why'd you say me? I don't know, just because you're the... I didn't do it. You always like to... Yeah. Yeah, flip them around. So, I'm actually going to. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I said. This is a game that it I saw, game. and when I saw it, I wanted it so bad. It's true. That I actually, we were at the Boardroom Game Cafe. We couldn't find it anywhere. We were at the Boardroom Game Cafe, and we saw them in the back unpacking a box of this, and I was like, can I please have one of those? Mm -hmm. But they weren't for sale yet, because they hadn't unboxed them. So I they had to get them. put them in their inventory. No, so I had to get them to set it aside, and that seems like it was forever ago. Yeah. And thanks to our Shelf of Shame challenge, we recently got this to the table. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wanted this game because it's cute. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. It was very good. Yeah. So within this game, you are building out your meadow mm -hmm. with different types of ground types. And then on top of the ground types, you're putting different animals or bugs or flowers and you're things literally like that. building out a meadow you're building out your meadow you're building out the landscape and it's a really puzzly game because as mm -hmm. you there's like a grid of cards and you have your little path token you put it into the grid and that's going to show you a number of the card you take or on the flip side you can do special actions around a campfire board mm -hmm. so sometimes the cards that you want you're not gonna be able to get because the other person is taking them or you've already used the action pawn and then you're building out your meadow but there's different placement rules as you build it out so let's say i want it to lay down a cougar they're in there and but the cougar needs a grassland type it also needs a small animal mm -hmm. and it needs a grub symbol so you have to make sure you have all of those symbols before you're actually able to lay down mm -hmm. that cougar and then you're covering up yeah. some of your symbols that's, that's the key component there if you play a card down and it covers up certain things those things are now gone mm -hmm. and whatever the cougar has a visible icon is what you have available for future cards exactly yeah. this was way more brain burning than i had expected yeah what i mean i don't think i wouldn't say it was overly complicated but no. there's definitely a depth of strategy for yes. sure easy to learn maybe hard to master and i also really liked in this game there's different like bonus objectives that you can get around the campfire which at the end of our game jeff just started pumping through all of those objectives and i was like what the heck i just really like this game I yeah if you if you like tableau builders where you're kind of just building out your own thing definitely mm. check into this one it's got a bit of a hate draft element in two player obviously with the cards that you can draft i i really really enjoyed it i spent the entire game just trying to draft all of the cutest Cute. animals yeah. the art in this game is mm -hmm. maybe it's some beautiful. of the best yep. i've ever seen it's a it is game. adorable it's so pretty all the artwork looks like it's like painted mm -hmm. on i knew that i was going to like it but i i didn't expect to like it as much as i did yep and there is one other thing that i forgot to mention about this within the box of meadow it comes with like five or six different secret envelopes mm -hmm. and in the rule book it tells you when you should open them so it's like if you go to a national park then you get to open this envelope once it's christmas time then you get to open this envelope and i just thought that that was really really cool i yeah. love that and there is a new expansion coming and it has an otter on the cover so you know i am getting that game next up another one voted on from our patrons sure was. and that is stardew valley the board game from a concerned ape who actually made the stardew valley video game mm -hmm. so this board game is based on the stardew valley video game which i absolutely love it's one of my favorite games don't care what you say don't care if you like don't like farm simulators or whatever this game's amazing. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And everyone should go play it. The video game. The board game, also incredible. We've played it and lost at the very, very end. Oh. But my goodness, I I am not a co-op fan. No. And I don't know if it was just because it's Stardew Valley and I mm -hmm. love the theme so much. But this game was really good. Yep. It was a very, very good co-op experience. So in Stardew Valley, you're basically playing out just like in the video game. You're cooperatively trying to achieve four of grandpa's goals mm -hmm. while at the same time reinvigorating the uh, community, community center. center via certain goals that you have to achieve and in order to win the game you have to do both of those things yeah. you have to complete all of grandpa's goals and you have to completely reinvigorate or revamp the community center mm -hmm. and you're doing that by making 
board selections by moving your meeple around and doing certain actions, whether it's mining, farming, fishing, um, fishing, trying to Make create friends. friendships with the townsfolk. If you've played Stardew Valley, you are playing Stardew Valley, the video game in this game. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. It was definitely a challenge. And we got right to the very end. I think if we had one more turn, we would have won. Yes. It's very important to identify not only what you have to do from the board perspective, but what your character is good at. Yes. Jamie was good at fishing. I was good at mining. From your profession. At the beginning, you pick a mm -hmm. profession. And you're going through the four seasons mm -hmm. as well. So the season deck is kind of like your timer. Your timer, yeah. So you're going through like three rounds in spring, three rounds in summer, three in fall, and three in winter. And then that's kind of like the end of the game. So yep. you can kind of see like what's... The ticking time as you're playing the game. I loved this game. You know when you play a game and you just get like happy when mm -hmm. you're playing it? That's how I felt playing this game. I've played a little bit of Stardew Valley, the video game, but definitely not nearly as much as Jeff has. I would say if you are a fan of Stardew Valley, this is a no-brainer. The only thing I could think would be a hurdle is if you, if you don't like co-op games. However, again, the not really a mechanic I love and I loved this. Yes. The other thing is like we said we came close to winning this is not easy to win now that's kind of what you want in a co-op game i feel like mm -hmm. you don't want to win on your first time around there is a little bit of luck involved in this because yep. there's some dice rolling and it's going to depend on the friends that you turn up and whether you have the right resources and yep. all of these things there's a lot of card flipping there's a lot of rolling, card yeah. flipping there's a lot going on mm -hmm. this game takes up a lot of table space there's a lot of pieces there's a lot going on that you need to manage i just had the best time it was not complicated to learn and play no not at uh, all. you learned it and you mm -hmm. taught me very quickly and all you need to know is what each location does that's yeah. basically it. yeah and like how to achieve the objectives it's really cool because each game somewhat different yep you're gonna have different goals that come up mm -hmm. uh different character types that you can pick obviously with the card flips there's different people that come out to make friends with yes. different villagers different fish types that come available mm -hmm. there's a luck element so if you are completely turned off by luck of the draw or luck of the roll mm -hmm. maybe you won't like this i mm -hmm. don't know but this was a game that we purchased yep. expecting to leave it on our shelf forever and never play i am extremely happy that that got put on our list for our shelf that shelf is September. one i think we will go back to many times yeah i, I want to really, i play it right now i literally. really enjoyed it yeah. yeah another game sent to us for review from plan b games and that is yeah now, if you guys know anything about me, you know that this is a game that is adorable and that I immediately wanted as soon as I saw it. Literally, we walked by it a million times and every time I was like, I gotta get that game. And then we chatted with someone from Plan B and they ended up sending it to us, which we are mm. extremely appreciative of. Just FYI, we played Mar Mushroom Sorcerer, Stardew Valley, and Meadow at two players. Two players. We the played other two are at uh, multiple. We played Yak at four, at Merchant's Cove at multiple. Yes. Spoiler. Spoiler. So Yak, we played with Tyler and Ilya when we visited them in Edmonton. And mm -hmm. Tyler and Ilya actually have a full how to play of this game. If you are interested, yep, you should go and check it out. This is a family style game. It is produced to the max. Some might say overproduced. I don't even know what that word means. I think it's cute. It comes with yak meeples that hold carts, that hold blocks, and they move, and that's fantastic. They're literally building out a little like tower. Wall. Yeah, so you have a little player board in front of you, and you are building up like Jeff said, a wall. And there's different ways that you can place the blocks that you're collecting mm -hmm. in order to score more points. So maybe, and there's like different objective cards that will mm -hmm. come up. So maybe you want to have certain colors touching each other. Maybe you want to have certain colors away from each other. Only like there's all of these different things and that is going to help you determine how you're building up this little wall. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, the yaks that are in front of you are gonna be moving each round. They're gonna be shifting. And then a new yak with new types of resources is going to be in front of you. You're going to be paying different things like food and what are the other resources? I don't remember. Meat, milk, bread, and certain yak carts can only take certain things. Like you can only pay certain things things in order to get a block. Mm -hmm. Exchanging those to get the blocks right. Yeah, in order to get the stones. The stones are different colors. There's also fog that comes up, and if mm -hmm. the fog comes up, then different things trigger. This is not a complicated game. No. This is a game you could very easily play with children. We haven't played it at two players yet, but I am definitely interested to see how it would play at two player. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of heavy strategy mm -hmm. in this. 
very easy to learn, easy to play, and I would recommend this if you have children. I would say if you don't typically like lighter games, this one probably wouldn't be it for you. There are some things within it that are very gimmicky, which for me, I love. There's a baby yak. Like I said, there's yaks pulling carts, which might seem a little bit silly to you, but to me, I freaking love yeah, that. It's very tactile in the sense where if you're playing with a younger kid who it's visual and it's almost like having some toys out on the yeah. board, like you're just moving the yaks around this tiny little rondelle. Mm -hmm. It's very simplistic. I think it'd be a great way to introduce kids to board gaming mm -hmm. and give them lots to look at with beautiful colors and building up blocks. Yep. I think it's perfect. And that. there's different levels. Like I said, you can play with objective cards, but you don't need to if you're playing with younger children. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Yeah, I'm not saying it, this game is just for kids either. Like, we no. played it as four adults and overly it enjoyed it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was really, really cute. So, that is Yak from Plan B. He's so cute. Last but not least is another game that we do own, but is, in fact, packed, I mm -hmm. think, in one of the boxes next to us because we are moving soon. 15 days, if you missed it earlier. That game is called Merchant's Cove. And that is from Final Frontier Games. So we have played Merchant's Cove at two players. We have played it at three players. We have played it multiple times at four players mm -hmm. with multiple sets of people. Merchant's Cove is a, what I would say is a very kind of s solo experience to some degree. So each player is going to have an asymmetrical faction or asymmetrical player board. And you're just trying to produce goods mm -hmm. to sell to the people coming to your merchant's cove, essentially, yeah. in order to score victory points. There's a tiny bit of interaction between players wherein you can manipulate what types of people are coming to buy goods mm -hmm. that benefit you. So whether it be red, yellow, or green. Mm -hmm. So you're producing red, yellow, or green resources, or blue as well. Yep. And then you can manipulate what types are or what type of people are coming to look for those specific goods. That's pretty much it in terms of the player interaction. Mm -hmm. It's very much your own solo puzzle. Yeah. And each player plays a different way. So I've only played as the blacksmith. Mm -hmm. And the blacksmith produces goods by rolling dice and manipulating dice around his board. Yeah, dice placement yeah. for sure. I have played quite a few different ones. So I have played the sea captain, which she's got a lot of different, like she's got a bit of a rondelle that she kind of goes around and opens up different treasure chests. And she's got little ships that move around. I've also played as the oracle, which is a roll and write, which is really, really cool. I've also played as the one with the marbles, the alchemist. Is that it? I don't remember. There's one with marbles. I can't remember her name, but I've played as that one. And essentially like with her, you're building out different potions and stuff by like manipulate. It's basically potion explosion on her board. Mm -hmm. And then I've also played as the time traveling duo, which is like an old man. It's mm -hmm. kind of like back to the future style. Yeah. And that one's all about like jumping through time. So each, there's so many different factions, so many different characters you could choose from. And they each play differently in terms of the mechanics that they mm -hmm. use, which is very, very cool. Yeah. I mean, again, the main core objective of the game is the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. Build goods to sell to people to score victory points. Yes. But everyone achieves that differently. Mm -hmm. And it's cool because they've used a bunch of different board game mechanics in order to establish each asymmetrical ability. Yeah. If you don't like kind of your own solo puzzle, probably one that's not going to hit with you. Yeah, that is a complaint that a lot of people seem to have about this game. It does not affect my enjoyment of the game. No. At if you all. like like Hadrian's Wall, yeah. It's very kind of like that level of like interaction. I exactly. Guess. I don't know. Like I love this game. I've loved it since the first time that we've played it. I have enjoyed all of the characters I've played. Now there's some that I enjoyed more than others, the Oracle and the Marble Lady. I thought were the funnest that I've played so far, but I am like so invested in trying all of the characters, whereas Jeff never wants to play I, anything I, but yeah, the Yeah, I really, really enjoy playing the blacksmith. I should probably try and play someone else because I should just try someone else, yeah. but I've really enjoyed the blacksmith play. I really enjoy Merchant's Cove. Sam from over at Lord of the Board has some content about Merchant's yes. Cove. Go check him out if you're you know, eager for more Merchant's mm -hmm. Cove information. Yep. There's a ton of expansions out for this game already with a ton of new characters. And yes. there's and a new... on Kickstarter, yeah. Mastercraft, which have I backed it? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. All in, baby. I want I them all. I don't even know what it is. It's just more characters, mm -hmm. basically. I would say like the biggest downfall of this game is the 
setup and the teardown. It is a lot of stuff. Does not necessarily fit back in the box always the way that it should. Putting the game away is almost a game in itself. It it's really, like it really is. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of wild. This might not be a game that I would say you have to go buy this game. Mm -hmm. I do think that you should play and try it first. If you have a friend that has it, a board game cafe, at a convention, try it first before you buy it because it is a big box game and I don't think yeah. that it's necessarily for everyone, no, but I it is definitely it is. for us. Yeah, And, and again, it's the Miko art and I love if that. If you don't like asymmetry. Yeah, because you have to like, you're going to be responsible for learning your own little your own little puzzle. thing. Yep. And some of them are quite complicated. The Oracle, like it took me a little while to wrap my mind around everything that she had to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that is Merchant's Cove. We love, these are five more games that we love. We just love board games. It's hard to, hard to mm -hmm. not. Am I right? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in buying any of the board games that we mentioned, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is, we this just is happen another, to have these. This is another board games remember? No. We just happen to have these out here. Just as a reminder, Mushroom Sorcerer is live on Kickstarter now. So if it is something you are interested in, go and check that out. We will link all of that information down below, as well as the information for the Merchant's Cove Mastercraft set. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later, guys. Did I scare you? Oh, don't do it again to me, okay? Ah! Ah, don't do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, you had weird phrasing there. Why? It's fine. You do you. No, because now in the video, as I'm talking, you're like... <laughs> so I have to redo it. No, you don't. I do. Oh, my God. What are you looking at? I'm just letting you talk. Oh, okay. And Yak is the only game we've, we've played of all of these. Nope, that's not true. We've played Merchants. Yeah. <laughs> How many okay. lies are you going to okay. tell in one video? No, I'm just going to say quickly. <laughs>